What is going on? Charles Bodenston here, and we are going to be moving more into the uh, podcast realm as we uh, move forward because A, I really like it, and B, is I can just sit here and just express my feelings and thoughts without actually being on camera. It's not even a big deal if, uh, you know, someone says anything about, oh, the music was too high or the production or is too long or whatever. It's a podcast, you know, so sit down, relax, and excuse me, Uncle Charles will be coming in and delivering some value. (laughs) Um, I don't know why, maybe because, what is it, Grant Cardone? He goes by uh, Uncle GC, Uncle uh, Grant. All right, so this is the biggest thing. Today we're going to be talking about becoming more, making more, and things like that. And most people, they obviously want more money. Even if you're worth billions of dollars, you see someone else that's worth hundreds of billions or what is it? Bill Gates is almost worth $100 billion now. You know, like, is he the richest man? I haven't looked it up. Obviously, I should probably do my research. However, I'm looking at the people that I know. I'm looking at the people that want to make more, but they need to give more value. That's really, if you really boil it down, Currency is actually delivered when value is provided. Let me repeat that. Currency is provided when someone receives value. Okay? So if I if I go to a cleaners, if I go get food, there's value given back to me. It's a transaction. Okay? We don't barter anymore. Well, at least most of the time we don't really barter. Bartering is a product for a product or a service for a service or a product for a service, whatever the case is. We usually use currency. That's why I'm actually saying that. And in, in, in today's market, a lot of it is service. And the reason being is that because there's a very small subset that's actually doing manufacturing or production or making things, you know, and that could be food or furniture, belts, clothing, whatever the case is. So your service, whatever whatever you're providing, it could be cloud service, it could be web design, it could be creative editing, whatever the case is, your service has to give you, has to give the client or the customer the value where they either come back for more. So in other words, it literally needs to be 5149. Okay, they need to feel that they got a little bit more than you're getting. Okay, or else there's no return clients and there's no referrals and your business is going to fluke. Okay, a lot of people and I'll tell you an example. So we hired this creative and she's wonderful. She's incredible. She is a growth mindset, which is only who I'm going to be hiring from now on. And we're moving into the content realm here at BPI, which is uh, the real estate company that I own. And we're going to be pushing hard in Q3, Q4 into content and then into next year and specifically video. And I can't even tell you how many people I went through. Everyone is a video producer or you know, editor or whatever the case is. So finally, I, I meet this girl. She's a growth mindset. Why is she a growth mindset? Because if she doesn't know anything, she'll research the shit out of it. She'll spend days being like, you know what? I actually know how to do overlays over video. I know how to do a certain color recorrection that I didn't know before, but now that I need to do it or at least color correct, I'm going to do it. And then she actually researches it. So that's a growth mindset. In other words, she knows that if she doesn't provide that value, her her rate, her hourly rate will not go up. So in other words, wh- this could boil down to literally anything. I'll give you an, another example. When I was younger and I was under 30, I actually started caddying, uh, which is carrying golf clubs for anyone that doesn't know. I started caddying at age 12. And when you caddy in the beginning, you don't, no one knows who you are. So you really get the shittiest you know, people that are not good at golf, they don't tip really well because they still need a caddy, but nobody wants to work with them, you know? So it's, it's kind of the other way around where they're getting 51% and you're receiving 49% if you're looking at the transactional value. So in other words, they still tip you. It's not that good. And they're, you're working harder. So do you know what I'm saying is that if there's a really good golfer, he's keeping it on the fairway, he's shooting, uh, right at the flag it's an easy quick round and we're talking about the middle of the summer so when you first start out and this is with anything you first start out in web design acting anything else 
and and then I'll come into the the why of this. But when you start out with anything, you have the worst jobs, you have the worst clients, you have the worst customers because it's like getting into real estate. When I first started getting into real estate, I only worked with renters. A lot of renters went behind my back, understandably so. They wanted to save money, so they went behind my back, and then they you know bought or sold or rented whatever they were doing without me receiving a commission because they felt that they can get money off rightly wrongly whether they did or they didn't doesn't matter but you're literally working with non-loyal people and it's the same thing with any type of business that you're starting so only until you started providing more value okay so in uh, the two examples i gave which is caddying and real estate i'll give you caddying more value is you're friendly you're fun you hustle you run you you know, wherever the ball is, you give them correct yardage, you pull out the flag stick, you understand the game of golf, you remember names, you remember stories, you laugh. It's an engaging experience for whoever is golfing, whoever is paying you. The golfers need an engaging, fun, charismatic caddy. And if they don't, you're never going to get hired again. So you have to provide more value in that realm where it's an experience. And I'll just give you this, is that John Taffer, John Taffer is the guy that uh, he has, what's that show? Um, bar Rescue. So he has that uh, Bar Rescue show. And he, he recently came out and he said that the reason a transaction goes through is that the process of them going through that, through that transaction has to be a positive emotion. So in other words, who gives you a positive emotion when you go through that transaction? Apple, Amazon. Uh, say Tesla, you know, these. So in other words, the brand is really not how it looks on the outside. The brand is how you go through the process of buying, selling, returning, or that service. And if they have a positive emotion through that process, they will return on top of obviously the price and the value and the other in the customer service after they buy. There's a whole slew of things. The value, going back to the other example, the value that I had to provide as a rental agent to become a sales agent and to get referrals and to stay in business is I had to know my craft. And by knowing the craft is I had to know the numbers. I had to know the areas. I had to know if it was a good value or bad value. I also had to be engaging and charismatic. If you're in any service industry, you have to understand that the majority of your business is going to be how they feel by engaging with you, whether that's engaging with you through email, text, your website, the actual cart adding to a cart. Is it is it hard? Is it easy? The checkout process, do, can you, do you have PayPal and things like that? So your value, if you want to make more money, and, and we'll go into the actual reason <laughs> I'm doing this podcast, but the value that someone pays for your product or service again, has to be, they have to receive 51%. Because if they feel that they got overcharged or not good service, they're never going to return. They're never going to come back. So you think about it. The only way that someone actually repeats business or gives referrals is if they feel that it's worth it. They always say that. Well, you know what? Why do you like this business? Oh, I think they have a good value. You know, why they, the value that I receive for the payment I give is more in my favor as the customer all right so you'll hear it all the, all the time of people saying i want i want to make more money say they could be in any industry it could be as a server it could be owning a business i want more clients i want more customers i want more repeat business i want more people coming to my restaurant whatever the case is you have to become more to make more you have to become more to make more Okay, no one is going to pay you more unless you become more because that's that then, as I was saying before, 4951, the 51 is now in your advantage and the other person feels like they're getting shafted. In other words, they gave out 51 percent and you're only returning 49 percent. It's like. What if you bought the computer instead of at $1,000, you spent $1,500, you bring it home and you're like, I don't think that was worth it. You're never going to go back. You're not going to use that product or that service again. And to be honest, the business that you bought it from is probably going to be out of business because they're not giving 
the value that you gave and some, okay? So what does that mean for you guys? Let's go into, you're obviously listening to this. You're already obviously into self-development or a little self-improvement or at least learning about it. You have to take it and put it into action. You know, what's the book by um, Peter Thiel? Um, Peter Thiel invested in uh, PayPal and Facebook and, you know, Washington Post. He, he's, he's one of the most pro- prolific uh, people in Silicon Valley. And ironically enough, the only Republican. So he got a lot of crap in the last presidential election tell you that much that was that was interesting because he's he invested in facebook and obviously mark is not a fan of uh donnie guy in the white house and peter Thiel was and he voted for him so it was a a nice interesting little uh drama thing but that's over and you just move on you just you have no you have no there's things that happen that you have no control over the weather the economy you just you just go through it in election you know higher taxes lower taxes this regulation this business is taking over this disruption you just have to go through it so going back to giving more to make more is that you need to so peter Thiel came out with a book called zero to one okay zero to one means that you have an idea and you're taking it from zero which is an idea and you're going to one which is action which is putting into place, which is buying the domain name, starting the LLC, you know, doing something that you're not just thinking about it. Okay. That everyone has an idea. I have tons of ideas. Okay. There's tons of ideas that I don't act on. So you really, so there's two things with this. Number one is you have to understand which ones you should act on and the ones you should not act on. The ones that you should not act on are the ones that are easy. Okay. The, the easy ideas, the, the ideas that, it's already in the marketplace. Uh, someone's already doing it. It could be as small as a video series. You know, are there already a bunch of video series out there for buying a home or selling a home? Or you have to give something that's totally new. So us here at BPI, what we're going to do is we're going to be calling on influencers to interview them and say, "Hey, listen, kind of like a Lewis Howes." Um, and a lot of people do this, you know, impact theory does this. And before impact theory, it was called, uh, I forgot, whatever. And then they have behind the brand. So there's a lot of people that are doing this. Those are interesting because the person that you interview is going to be so different than say who they interviewed five, six months ago. However, if you put out a video series, how to buy or sell a home or how to make cupcakes or whatever, that's great. That's fantastic. However, it has to give more value, not only more value, but you also have to think about in the consumer's mind, okay, what am I getting out of watching this video? And then if you get more, it's the same thing with this podcast. You know, it's like if, if I didn't give enough value, you wouldn't re-listen and or subscribe. So I have to give a ton of value. So you're like, you know what? I want to hear more of this next week when I put out another podcast. So you have to take your ideas and put it into action. And then when you put it into action, you have to say, okay, transactionally, am I giving more than I receive? Am I giving 51% as opposed to 49%? If you're talking about even YouTube, the person who watched the five minute video, are they receiving 51% enough to either rewatch or subscribe? You know, there's no, the transaction in that, it wasn't currency, it was time. I got their time and they got my content. However, if my content is not 51%, this is very important because a lot of people are like, why don't I have more subscribers? Why don't I have more followers? Why don't I have more views? Well, look at your content. What kind of content are you putting out there? Are you putting out content just to get views, just to get subscribers? Because in the short term, it may work. In the long term, that's not sustainable, okay? So when you're putting out content, you have to understand, okay, who's my customer? Who's the person I'm trying to reach? Okay, and am I giving 51% as opposed to their 49%, which is their time? So there was a lot of things that I just talked about right there. But the number one thing is that if you want to make more, if you want to do anything, if you want to do anything a little bit more, get more followers, subscribers, or anything, you have to become more. You have to give more value at a higher level. 
And then the last examples, going back to the first thing I said with the creative, the, the creative girl that we hired. And it was mostly part time. She then came back to us, you know, like three weeks into working with her. And she goes, hey, listen, my rate is different. It's more expensive. And I'm thinking in my mind and I, you know, listen, she's 24, 25 years old and she's very good at what she does and she's very smart. And in my mind, she doesn't have the business savvy. This is the thing. She doesn't have the business savvy yet to know that we're on the rise as a company, number one. Charles is on the rise, number two. And number three is that you don't want to screw this up. And I'll be talking about that in a future podcast, which is you don't want to screw up the opportunities that you have because you have an inflated ego or you feel that you're worth more. Listen, get what you're worth. But if you see an opportunity that there's going to be repeat business or a long term relationship, always choose that. Always choose that. Otherwise, you're transactional and you're just going for that one paycheck, not the dozens of paychecks after this in the coming months because we're hiring you for additional video services. Oh, and by the way, we're sending out you to other clients who are using them for their activities and events. And then you're spreading your your whole uh, ecosystem. You're not busy enough that you can just raise the prices. So that was the thing is that's what set off this whole podcast is that she came back to us and she said, hey, by the way, uh, my rate has gone up. I said, that's fantastic. What extra value are you going to be providing? And not only was she not going to be providing extra value, but she also was going to be editing less. So editing less could be less, uh, you know, not as good of a video because she's going to be editing less. So we talked about it and then she said, you know what, you're right. I see the potential in BPI. I see the potential in you, Charles. Uh, let's roll let's let's go with the same pricing and it wasn't like a big thing but it triggered it because i don't want most of the audience is is younger than me i'm 32 and everyone under me is i wouldn't have known this at 24 25 she's way beyond where i was in my thinking she's thinking 10 years out i at the time because i was dead broken with no uh opportunities to make more money needed every single paycheck okay so it's the same thing with you guys is that if you need every single paycheck pretend that you don't and look for the long-term value which is a totally different podcast but to become more to get paid more to get more repeat business to give more um, referrals to get more referrals you have to give 51 percent as opposed to receiving, give 51, you receive 49, you'll get repeat business. To make more, you have to become more. And to become more, you have to take action towards your ideas. Everyone has an idea. My sister has an idea to start a travel website. She's not taking action on it, she's still traveling. And I'm saying, Kerry, you, you can't do this sustainably. So I hope this helps a little bit. I hope uh, you guys took a little bit out of this. If you have any questions towards this, then obviously leave it in the comments or wherever you heard this below and subscribe to the podcast. Have an awesome day. And uh, obviously to anyone that's that's asked about it, the, the biggest thing for us is we wanted to get a certain amount of people on the seminar to f have our first one because if it was only three people, I love you three people. Obviously we have more. Um, but I want it big enough because I'm thinking, you know, not as many people are going to actually sign up for the day and the time. And then there's going to be less people that show up because they didn't pay for it. It's just the law of, you know, business. So we want to get a, a nice, healthy amount of people on the mailing list and then we'll send out some dates. So have an awesome idea. Have an awesome idea. Have an awesome day. Talk to you guys soon. And obviously, as Tony Robbins says, live with passion.